Oh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wanted to start by noting that last year's defense authorization bill included a, 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 a bill that was rolled into it, a, a bill I had advocated for to establish an interagency task force called the China Censorship Monitor and Action Group. And that task force would be responsible for addressing China's censorship and intimidation of American companies. According to the law, there were milestones for setting up this task force. It's supposed to have been implemented by now. Uh, has it been? Thank you, Senator. Um, uh, it, that is somewhat outside of my responsibilities at, at, at the State Department. I will tell you that we've, uh, we've institutionalized a, a new focus on, on transnational repression at the State Department to, to protect Uyghurs and, and other targeted communities from, from harassment abroad. Uh, some of the things we've done is we've, we've issued uh, visa restrictions uh, uh, to, to, uh, against PRC nationals involved in transnational re, uh, repression. Um, that's the, the I, I can go back and get further information on this. Yeah, I do so appreciate the work on transnational repression because I'm really championing a, a massive increase in our effort. Uh, freedom of speech is not freedom of speech if people are threatening to harm the, those you love yeah. abroad if you exercise uh, your, your right to, to share opinions. And um, because this is an interagency task force, I would ask both of you to go back and check on it because I think understanding how U.S. companies are being pressured is a very important part of our economic life and uh, certainly of uh, the dynamic in economic relations with China. And now we have uh, Congress saying uh, you have a responsibility to set up and focus on this and share ideas between the agencies and it seems like a good idea, and it's required by law. So if both of you could check on that and then get back to me and let me know, uh, maybe this will serve as a little spark to, uh, to, make, it, to make it happen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Appreciate that. So um, I, regardless of that interagency action group, I hope the administration will work uh, urgently to, to, to uh, protect U.S. businesses from censorship, from intimidation, from coercion, uh, so that they can exercise uh, the opinions that they would, would like to have. Do you all both share that uh, opinion? I do. Couldn't agree more. I, I suspected <laughs> so. But it has been uh, really um, troubling to see the examples of PRC's public Repu Republic of, the People's Republic of China suppression of free expression in the United States uh, in the film industry. Uh, we've seen it in uh, the universities, and we've seen it in a host of, of other businesses, including, for example, the response uh, to a tweet by the Houston Rockets executive, uh, Daryl um, Morey, who endangered the NBA's business in, in, in China. It's my perception that this economic coercion strategy by China, which isn't just about the US, it's about a number of other nations as well, is getting more uh, aggressive and more frequent. Is, is that, you know, but what have, you all, what have you all seen? Is it getting more aggressive and more frequent? Um, and is there a, a hope for us to uh, really accentuate strategies to respond to this? As Senator, I would, I would agree that, yes, it seems to be more frequent and more aggressive. I, I do think I would echo one thing that um, Undersecretary Fernandez said before, though, which is, in many cases, I think it's starting to backfire. Um, I think when it was an isolated incident, it was easy enough for either a country or a company to say, well, that's over there and I'm safe where I am. But the, the greater the frequency, more people look and recognize what the risks are. I think it's why you see more businesses try to set up their supply chains in ways that, that they could pivot if they need to very quickly. It's why you see countries talk to each other about how they would deal with these issues. 
And I think it's, it's why both countries and companies are taking second thoughts um, about how they engage here. So I, I think it is something that, as we've been talking about today, we need to use a whole range of tools to make both countries and companies less vulnerable here and be ready to respond when there are actions like this. But I also think it's something that um, China is doing damage to itself. And as it tries to, as it worries about its own economy and tries to say they're a business friendly investment place that wants private investment to lead the way, these types of actions aren't helpful. And I think we all we can do is, is make sure everyone is aware of that. It, it is backfiring, but, um, but it's our job to push back against it anyway. And I would add to your, to your list, uh, Ennis Cantor, another basketball player. Mm -hmm who uh, also spoke former out. Former trailblazer, I might note. I'm sorry? Former trailblazer. Former, New York, to note. former New York Nick as well. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. And, and we have, uh, before the Congressional Executive Commission on China, invited Enos uh, uh, to uh, testify, Enos Freedom, as he, as he renamed himself. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a real example. In that case, though, so, uh, oppression coming from Turkey. Um, so, um, in terms of doing business in China, do I, uh, I have another question, but I'm over my time. Okay. So, in June, China p placed into action a new espionage law. It puts greater restrictions than before on U.S. companies' ability to operate in, in China. And I reflect back on, I visited China just before she came into power. And there were a group of 10 senators that, that uh, Harry Reid uh, led, bipartisan group. And, and the conversation very much was about a lightening of restrictions. And uh, by that, I mean uh, uh, reporters were saying for the first time they were allowed to live where they wanted. They didn't have to have a, a companion with them. They could actually walk behind a factory and see if they were dumping uh, waste directly into the river, they could report on that, more tolerance for, for labor activists to report on uh, abuses, more religious freedom, especially in the southern part of, of, of China. And, um, but now, under the last 10 years under Xi, it's been the other, it's been the other direction. And in this case, um, a real expansion of its definition of espionage and further limits on U.S. businesses. Um, are, have we seen this kick into action yet? Uh, how much should U.S. businesses be, be concerned about this? Are individuals uh, facing the potential for uh, risk if they express themselves freely under argument that it's espionage or if they travel in the wrong place and so forth? Uh, Senator, I'd say we have seen uh, a handful of cases where it has been employed. To a large extent, I would say it is still an ambiguous law and it's very non-transparent and it hasn't been used in a widespread fashion yet. So we had, when I was um, in China with Secretary Yellen, we had a number of conversations with US firms to understand how it might be impacting them yet. I think in most cases, the answer was they're watching. Um, there are an, a, a particular number of due diligence firms and consulting firms that have faced um, uh, negative aspects of this, where there have been arrests or investigations. Um, it's something that we raised with the Chinese directly. It's something we discussed with, uh, I discussed with China's ambassador when I, when I met with him, um, making clear that this is not how a country runs a, a, a business-friendly investment environment. And if they say they want investment from U.S. businesses, um, it is not our policies preventing that when they do things like this. And so we've tried to advocate for U.S. firms and to advocate for why policies like this are not uh, productive for, for China or certainly run counter to our interests. And we've engaged with U.S. firms quite a bit to, to understand exactly how it's being employed. Thank you. The, the only thing I would add to what the Undersecretary just said is it's ambiguous by design. Ambiguity has a deterrence. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's important to keep in mind. Uh, and I, I, I said it earlier that the PRC is banking on businesses being uh, following the allure of, of, uh, of the market. And, and it's a huge market, and they, they want to see what they can do there. Uh, we have uh, uh, we've welcomed warnings by the Chamber of Commerce. They've been very 
uh, vocal on this and we've welcomed that. We've also issued a number of travel warnings as well. We'll continue monitoring. This is why we need to work on diversifying supply chains and giving alternatives, not just to other countries, but also to our companies. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Senator Duckworth.